sounds like it all the way to All right. I'm really excited to introduce the next person to our next performer. Each year we've started a tradition a few years back. By the way, the microphone is usually too high and I have to lower it. This is a good change for me. I feel like Ed LeBorn up here. All right. Yeah, I'm hoping for that growth spurt at age 50. So we started a bit of a tradition a few years back of having a soloist perform with the Wind Ensemble, a bit of a concerto uh, at the final concert, and, uh, and it's been a, a really special thing. And this year, we're really pleased to feature our two-time All-State flutist, Lauren Simon. And yeah, give it up for her. her to the stage, I want to tell you a quick story about her, which may or may not help her nerves right now, I'm not sure, but it's pretty exciting. So um, last year at Solon Ensemble Contest, she was performing, and, and it was well into lunch. The judge was um, into his lunch break, mainly because he writes a lot, and he's one of the most well-known band directors in, uh, in Ohio, retired band directors from Grove City, was her judge, and she didn't know that. Um, but really, really great band director and musician was judging her, and, um, and she was getting ready to perform a 12-minute solo, one of the hardest solos on the Class A list. And um, I said, just so you know, she's doing this like without any cuts, and we're really late, we're well into lunch. And he said, okay. He's kind of figured this is probably worth it. So he listened to her play all the way through, and he could have stopped her when it got to 10 minutes, because it's kind of the limit. And at the end of the solo, he said, I'm 40 minutes past my lunch, and I thought, oh no. But he said, I'm 40 minutes past my lunch, and I don't care, because that's the best performance I've heard in 35 years as a judge. gave her a one plus and we walked out of the room and I said, Lauren, do you know who that was? And she said, no. And, um, and I told her and it was really remarkable and she's gone on to do even bigger and better things and I'm sure she will as she goes on to the Ohio State University and pursues a career in music. So let's welcome her to the stage right now. Please welcome Lauren Simon.
joy to bring out my other colleague again welcome to the stage mr. Andrew Peoples so we uh, man, what a pleasure it is to listen to Lauren play and I just want to take a moment to really celebrate what we have here at Walnut Hills High School in our fine arts department, uh, whether it be our visual arts, certainly our theater arts, and, uh, and close to our heart, of course, is the, the musical performing arts. So, gosh, what a, what a thing it is to have access to such wonderful material to work with students that are interested and engaged and dedicated to something bigger than themselves. I think uh, music is something that is really important right now. Um, to be able to experience like this way, to work with people with whom maybe you aren't uh, in every way similar or in every way uh, lock and step. But um, man, it's so important. And to be able to have this at Walnut Hills and have something so special, which I think is unique in the city. Uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot of places that offer the depth and the breadth and the quality of music from top to bottom. Um, so I'm just so, uh, so glad to be a part of this. And I'm also really thankful for those people who stand behind us uh, and, and certainly whip the Walnut Hills Instrumentalist Parents is something that is an organization for which we are hugely indebted. Uh, WIP is, a, uh, is our booster organization. It covers orchestra, band, jazz band, steel band, and choir. Um, and it's just an integral part to our success. Um, you're able to donate to it if you so choose, and we certainly would appreciate any, any sort of gift in that way. Uh, but we would also love if you happen to come next year, if your student is still in school, we would love to have you come out to WIP, see what it's all about. 
We are very forthcoming. You'll get to know how we spend every cent. You'll get to be part of the process of making this happen. But uh, those things, things like our parents, things like our students and, and people that participate in WIP help to cultivate the type of thing that allows for a performance like we just had with a wonderful soloist. Uh, so interestingly, tonight's performance, we started with an overture to an opera called Candide by Leonard Bernstein, a very famous overture, also has a wonderful finale, but was largely not super loved as an operetta, um, but a wonderful overture, one of my very favorite pieces of music. Then we just had excerpts from an opera called Carmen, which may be the most popular opera of all time, it may be. Uh, by Georges Bisset. And then we're going next to a concert overture. So John Barnes Chance was, in the world of band, you have these moments when different composers come to the forefront. When these students, if any of them were to become a band director or were to participate in music, uh, artists like um, Randall Standridge and John Mackey and some of these people would be like, oh yeah, that was what we played back then. John Barnes Chance, if you were in band in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, you probably were very familiar with this composer. Uh, this is an overture, but it's not the overture to an opera or some other concert piece. It's just an overture to a performance. And this one is called Blue Lake Overture. Blue Lake is a fine arts camp in Michigan. It's a wonderful place. It still exists. Your students could sign up for Blue Lake. Not for this season, because they've probably already done their acceptances. But uh, you can be, still be a part of Blue Lake. So this is an overture by John Barnes Chance called Blue Lake Overture. Thank you. 
they're just trying to make me feel good now. All right, before we play our last piece, I want to say uh, a few thank yous. Mr. Peoples already said a, a thank you to the Walnut Hills Instrumentalist parents, um, WIP. They're incredibly supportive and we couldn't do what we do without them. We're entirely, nearly entirely funded by WIP. I'd like to thank um, John Chambers and our administrative team. I'd also like to thank Debbie Heldman and the Walnut Hills Alumni Foundation for all their support. And of course, um, I would be remiss if I didn't thank our our wonderful team of band directors. It's not in every job, maybe you are so fortunate, but it's not in every job where you get to work with very close friends. And we're incredibly blessed to get to work with each other. We make each other laugh. Um, we hopefully don't make each other cry very often. We really do love each other and, and it, it really uh, is a joy to work with uh, Andrew Peoples and Ed LeBourne every day. So let's give them a nice round of applause. Also like to thank, she's always behind the scenes, but she does so much, our, our band queen, our music department secretary, um, Sammy Forrester. Let's say thanks to her for everything she does. Here. A big thank you to all of our private teachers. We have some here tonight, um, as well as uh, Mr. Gardner, who helped out and, and uh, worked with our percussion group. Let's we'll say a nice thank you, round of applause for our private teachers. Um, also, a uh, huge thank you. This is really exciting because it's the second concert in a row with the Wind Ensemble that I've, I've got to welcome a friend back on stage. Um, but my good friend, Brenda Hartman, right here, is joining us again on piano. Give it up for her. I had the pleasure of teaching her two sons uh, back at Finneytown, and one of her sons, Andy Hartman, is a band director now. That's pretty cool when you have a former student who turns into a band director and actually wants to do what you're doing after they see all that you're doing. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, finally, I'd like to say a special thank you um, to the parents, guardians, family members, grandparents, everybody that has supported these students on stage and especially our seniors. Uh, because you've driven them to wherever they need to be, you have made sure they had what they needed to wear, you've done everything that's necessary to make sure that they are up here on this stage and are successful. And if any of your students out there on the fence because they want to take seven APs next year, let them be a kid. They have to experience music, they have to have that in their life. Here at Walnut Hills, we're fortunate, we have so many things. But with so many things, it's important that we are still grounded and we realize that we need this in our lives. Mr. Peoples talked about it before, but right now, more than ever, it's essential that we have the arts in our lives because otherwise we might go crazy, right? And before I get off my soapbox and conduct one last piece, I wanna just give a little mini uh, plug for our seniors that are graduating. This doesn't have to be the last time you play music, and it shouldn't be. Find those opportunities, whether it's in a university or it's in a, uh, a community band, or it's just performing uh, with friends. Keep playing, because it will help you feel better, it'll help you just be better and live. And music without, or life without music is, it's not the same. So. That being said, let's have one more round of applause for all these students and their wonderful music. <laughs> My TED talk is done and now you get to hear one final piece. This is dance on number two, which we performed earlier, but we liked it so much that the students unanimously wanted to perform it again. <laughs> so here we go, dance on number two.
Now we get to recognize our seniors. And the wind ensemble. 